Okay, fellow Cummins owners, this post is on porting and polishing 12 valve cylinder heads. Uh, this is not meant to be the end all be all. This is informational only. So please, I know there are people out there that do a better job. Don't send me hate mail or anything like that. This is just trying to help out guys that are on a low budget, that have time, but not the money to send one of these off to get it ported and polished. Um, we, to, to give credit where credit is due, this is what we've learned and kind of put together from Competition Diesel and the Cummins forums and reading literally hundreds of hours trying to figure out how to do this correctly. Um, but that does not mean that we got everything correct. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by talking about, obviously this is an OEM Cummins head. We tried Chinese head and maybe that'll be a totally different post. I can talk about the, if you do buy Chinese cylinder heads, we've learned pretty much uh, the do's and don'ts. So that's why we switched back to an OEM head and it had cracks in the valve seats so we went ahead and had new seats pressed in and machined and had the surface decked so that this is ready to go back on our motor. I'm going to be talking today a little bit. I've got an extra light so we can actually see down in there hopefully. Um, gonna be talking about the actual port work here. It's time consuming but it is not uh, impossible to do by any stretch of the imagination. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to focus this beast here. I probably should have figured that out before I started started uh, this recording process. Had to use my wife's camera and it is way too fancy for this. Okay, so we've got some at least we have some clarity down there. First thing I want to talk about is that back side of the bowl as you're seeing it there. Um, this is the number six cylinder. What we tried to do is we used a combination of a three quarter inch carbide burr, which is round, bought it off of eBay. And if anybody needs that information, I'll, I'll try to uh, post it on this YouTube link. And we used a combination of grinding stones uh, large, about three quarter inch or one inch large round grinding stones with kind of a bull nose on it. And those we also purchased off, purchased off of eBay. Uh, we purchased them in bulk because you do go through a couple of them. We bought like 25 of them just trying to get the cost down because we have four of these come in cylinder heads that we're doing for our trucks here on our, our farm. And we also used sanding discs, or drums, sorry, sanding drums and mandrels from Harbor Freight to kind of finish it off after we were done roughing out the size. We did have available to us, we bought a set of kind of snap gauges so we could try to get the ports as close to even all the way around as we could. That proves to be a lot harder than it sounds. Um, so now on to the actual, let me get my light down in there again for us. Now on to the actual discussion about this. Um, we checked and rechecked, and I highly recommend doing your own research on this. We researched where all the possible oil galleys and coolant galleys and anything like that might have been um, to make sure that we didn't hit anything while we were porting. We did, let me see if I can get this down in there again for you. Sorry about the spotty light here. Okay. So, what we did is we took that carbide bowl, burr, and worked it, trying to get a straight, pretty close, a straight beginning right off the, the valve seat there to, to a ramp. And that ramp that we tried to get is about a quarter of an inch to maybe five sixteenths of an inch high. And try to get the light back in there. Let me see if I can get a brighter light there. Nope. Okay, so we worked that till we got it in there and we got it to about the right height with a nice gentle ramp. It helps to remember that this is going 
This is an exhaust port, and so it's coming out of the cylinder, and the direction of flow is past the seat and then into the bowl. That helps, that helps uh, figure out which way you should be blending and, you know, kind of angling everything in there. Um, so you can also see we did work it all the way around here so that we tried to get it to where you could it was smooth and even and the transitions were not harsh we wanted them all to be as clean and smooth as possible um, one of the big things that we did get this positioned here that we spent a lot of time researching before we started any of this was down in that on the upper side of what you're seeing there kind of that archway that's in the view right now that is a spot where there's a, quite a bit of material that can come off there and can be cleaned up now this I, d I didn't port this one very aggressively it's kind of a mild to medium port so I didn't take off as much on this one as I did on some of the other ones now transitioning to the exhaust side over here yes you can see my 85 Dodge Ram here with my 4BT in it. Um, that's my platform for right now. So right in here, you can see what we did on the exhaust outlet side. This is, we just kind of smoothed it off and we port matched it so that it should, it should match the gasket and the exhaust manifold are both port matched. We did also go as far to port match the turbo that we're using as well for this and we just tried to make a clean smooth ramp it's kind of uh, doesn't look as smooth on camera but that took a fair amount of work to get in there and clean that up so that is the exhaust outlet side we just used some markers some machinist die and we scribed we bolted the exhaust um, gasket on there and then scribed around the exhaust gasket to get what we wanted um, and if you noticed we also tried to make sure that our ramp if you can see that back notch that we left the kind of the I don't know what's left of that back hump that we were talking about at the very beginning tried to make it kind of a smooth transition so where it angles the angle on that ramp matches the airflow down to the latter part of the exhaust port there we're gonna go on to an intake we did not since this one we weren't going super aggressive we didn't go as aggressive as you'll find on some of the other I don't know even on like I don't know competition diesel had some examples of some guys that ported a little more aggressively nothing super crazy here because we didn't want to mess up the swirl we have done one and we did lose some low rpm um, power it felt like because we went pretty aggressive on the ramp cutting out and the flow on the intake port um, as i don't know if that shows up super well we did clean the transition coming off of the swirl port there we did clean up that ramp and just that lip there and took out any casting flaws and we also tried to clean out see if we can see down in there we did try to clean the sides of the bowl and down into with a long carbide um, kind of a round nose bowl we tried to clean the, the walls of the intake just make it so it was a nice clean transition and that's really hard on the intake side to do because it's just it's hard to work in there you have to use a long nose burr and you can't get sanding this or grinding drums in there very easily so overview this is it was much faster on these because we're learning how to do it a lot quicker but this is about 25 hours worth of work um, to get them all port matched gasket roughed out and then the final clean and polishing of them with the sanding drums we found that the core sanding drums worked pretty darn well in leaving a finish and when you compare this next to a OEM head you'll see that the difference in the smoothness of the runner is drastic and that it opens up in the exhaust port especially let's see if we can go back to an exhaust over here 
it opens up a lot of material and you can see how this would really increase the airflow and uh, if you're using a big charger or something like that it, it might be able to help you increase your efficient efficiency substantially I hope this helps if you have any more questions we might do another one show our more aggressive port that we did on the Chinese head that we had if you have questions you can leave questions or comments please no hate mail this is not meant I mean I'm, we are not in competition we don't do for this for prod profit or anything like that this is just trying to help fellow Cummins guys out there maybe whoop up on a few Duramaxes or power strokes or something like that even better maybe some imports or something like that that's always fun so have a great day hope you enjoy and if we have any modifications or any more information that I missed out I'll try to add to it thanks